Okay, grade 12, welcome to week 10. In this lesson, we're going to be learning some trigonometry, and I'm introducing a new thing to you, which are compound angle identities. So we are given the following formula, and they're on the formula sheet. We are told that cos of A minus B equals cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Cos of A plus B is cos of A cos of B minus sine A sine B. Sine of A plus B is sine A cos B plus sine B cos A. And sine of A minus B equals sine A cos B minus sine B cos B. Now you'll find these very useful tools and we will show you how to use them in the next um, lesson. But what you do need to know is how to derive the, we need to know how to derive, where is it, the second, third and fourth using this one here. So we're going to teach you that how to do that today because that is definitely examinable. So you are given that cos of a minus b equals cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. You are given that. And they say we need to derive the formula for cos of a plus b. So obviously we need to use this to get this new formula. So we're going to change cos of a plus b into cos of a minus minus b, right? And then it looks kind of like this, except that instead of a b, we now have a minus b. So now we can basically expand it. So we go, now that is equal to cos of a cos of minus b plus sine of a sine of minus b. Okay, we're almost finished, but we need to remember that cos of minus b equals cos b. How do we get that? We get that using our cos diagram. We've got all stations to Cape Town. Cos of minus b is in this quadrant here, in the fourth quadrant, and cos is positive. So cos of minus b is cos b, and we have sine of minus b is minus sine b again because negative, sine, negative b is in the fourth quadrant and sine is negative, which means we can now actually rewrite this to say that cos A, cos B minus sine A, sine B. So therefore, cos A plus B is cos A, cos B minus sine A, sine B. And you will notice that cos, what happens is it goes cos, cos, sine, sine, change the sign. And that's how I always remember it. Not that you have to remember it because it's on your formula sheet, but it's nice to have that little um, little saying or rhyme that will help you remember it. Now let's look at the others. We're again given that cos of a minus b is cos a cos b plus sine a sine b, but this time we have to derive the formula of sine a minus b. But how are sine and cos related? Remember that they are co-ratios, they are co-functions. So therefore sine of a minus b can be written as cos of 90 minus a minus b. 90 minus a minus b. So now if you think about it, the 90 can be the equivalent of the cos a and the a minus b is equivalent of b. So we write that as cos of 90 minus a plus b, okay, and then we can regroup it to be cos of 90 minus a minus minus b. Why? Because if we have that minus a plus b by itself, look, it just goes back to that. That's terrible. But if we regroup it, now we can see that, ooh, this here, this 90 minus a is the equivalent of a, and the minus b is the equivalent of b. And now we can substitute in again. So we've got cos of 90 minus a, cos of minus b, plus sine of 90 minus a, sine of minus b. Now let's think about how that changes in our cos diagram. So cos of minus b, again, all stations to Cape Town, is going to be in the fourth quadrant and therefore it is going to be positive. Sine of negative b is again going to be in the fourth quadrant and sine is negative in the fourth quadrant, that's right. Cos of 90 minus a, that's a co-ratio or co-function, you can think of it as a co-function. And therefore, it is going to be, and since it's all, everything's positive in the first quadrant, it's going to be positive sine. And similarly, sine of 90 minus a's co-function is cos, and because it's all in the first quadrant, it's all positive. So this becomes, cos of 90 minus a becomes sine a, cos of minus b is cos b, minus 
sine of 90 minus a is just cos a, but sine of minus b becomes minus sine b. So you can see that the signs, the signs stay the same. So the signs, the signs stay the same. Okay, but this time the numbers change, I mean the letters change, the functions change. It's sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. Right, next one. Now we are trying to derive sine of a plus b, sine of a plus b. So again, we're going to look at the co-function of cos of 90 minus a plus b. And again, we're going to rearrange it to be cos of 90 minus a minus b. And again, we're now going to multiply it out in this form. So we end up with cos of 90 minus a cos of b plus sine of 90 minus a sine of b. And again, we need to think about what we can change. And this time, it's only our two in our first quadrant, our co-functions, all stations to Cape Town. And we've got cos of 90 minus a, the co-function of cos is sine. They're both in the first quadrant, and therefore they're both positive. Similarly, sine of 90 minus a's co-function is cos a, and since they're in the first quadrant, everything's positive. So therefore, you've got cos of 90 minus a becomes sine a cos b plus, because they stay the same, cos sine of 90 minus a becomes cos a, and then you've got sine b. And that grade 12 is your co-functions and your double angle identities. Now you need to learn how to derive this one, and you need to learn how to derive the previous one and the previous one from this first original equation. If you need, you need to know how to derive it. Again, I'm very much against knee-jerk learning off by heart. I would rather you understand the principle of what we are doing every time and then working through it. Please go practice and then do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a great day.